This is Factual America. We're brought to you by Alamo Pictures, an Austin and London-based production company, making documentaries about America for international audiences. I'm your host, Matthew Sherwood. Each week I watch a hit documentary and then talk with the filmmakers and their subjects. This week it is my pleasure to welcome award-winning documentary filmmaker, Jordi Sank, the director and co-producer of I Am Here. The documentary celebrates the remarkable life of Ella Blumenthal, whose magnetic personality and spirit has remained undimmed despite living through one of history's darkest chapters. One of the oldest living survivors of the Holocaust, Ella celebrates her 98th birthday, where she reveals to close friends and family profound memories of her incredible survival in a way she has never done before. Stay tuned to learn more about this most inspirational woman and the way Jordy brought her incredible life story to the screen. Jordy, welcome to Factual America. How are things with you? Yeah, good. Good thanks and you, Matthew. Thanks so much for having me on the program. Well, it's our pleasure. Uh, you're our first South African, and hopefully not our last. But uh, wow. just want to welcome you uh, to to the to podcast again. The film is "I Am Here," uh, festival premiere last year. You won multiple awards. I know. Um, believe there's been a theatrical release in the U.S. Uh, last week. I think March 11th. Uh, what about streaming? Where you will you be streaming? Are you streaming yet? When when's that going to happen? Uh, we'll we'll be streaming from May twenty uh, fourth, um, so it's still yeah still coming in the next uh, next few months. And can we um, can we see where it's going to be? Um, so to, to be honest, I'm actually not entirely sure where where it's going to be just yet. Um, but uh, we'll have you know as soon as, as as soon as I know, I'll have you know. But also, okay. let me just and say that I'm very honored to be your your first South African guest. Wow, yeah. amazing. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, the honor is all ours because thank you so much for bringing Ella Blumenthal to to our attention. What an amazing story! Um, why don't you kick us off? Just give us a little synopsis of what is I am here all about. So I am here, really. You know, it, it's a cele- it's a celebration of life. You know, Ella um, is a when, when we were filming, it, it was her ninety eighth birthday. She's a Holocaust survivor and. We really just wanted to take the, her incredible zest for life that she possesses and her incredible positive outlook on life. And, you know, to be, we juxtapose that with her harrowing and uplifting tales of survival um, during the Holocaust and her traumas experienced. And, and really the film is a juxtaposition between yeah. um, her, um, her tales of survival and, and the way that she lives a, a beautiful life in the present. Yeah. I mean, uh, Oh my goodness! If I was like her, even even now, forget being ninety eight or now, I guess she's a hundred. Because uh, it's more than a survival story, isn't it? It's she's as you said, this feisty, magnetic personality belies what she went through. Now, if, do I understand correctly? You you kind of grew up with Ella in your life. Is is that right? Yeah, I was very lucky. I, I grew up in the same community as her, and mm. uh, and yeah, and I grew up very very close to her. I met her once. Um, sort of by chance, we were at a, a Friday night dinner together, and she stood up and she started telling these harrowing stories of survival. Um, but then something really fascinating happened. Um, she she started dancing, singing, playing with the kids, and I, I just had never seen someone who, you know, let alone someone who survived the Holocaust, but anyone really exude so much energy and positivity in the room before. She really just lit up the entire room, and and that really got me thinking. Wow, I've got to. I've got to get close to this woman and, you know, there's so much to learn from her. Um, and that was sort of the start of a beautiful, beautiful friendship. Oh, wow. And then, so the, the centerpiece of the film is her, is her 98th birthday. So you, you, I mean, as you say, there's these incredible stories and probably even made more incredible because of who's delivering it and how she delivers it. And, but, um, so her 98th birthday becomes a centerpiece. Now, she t- what is it she said she tells these in a new way is that right what what's happened in the 98th birthday that's different than the first 98 years that she's mm-hmm. that she's sharing with her family and friends so the 98th birthday was an amazing opportunity for us because we really got to be a fly on the wall and watch family from around the world come to celebrate her and um and you know it was also you know i think i think sometimes when when these things are so close to you you kind of don't you know don't deal with them so head on so it was an amazing weekend that we got to spend with the entire family where they got to ask Ella mm. um, their mother their grand their grandmother these 
you know, sort of questions that they'd never been able to ask her before. And, and you know, we sort of, as, as filmmakers, we got them to sit down all in a room together and we, you know, um, just sort of, I guess, gave the conversation a little push. And, and you know, it was mm. just very fascinating to see that conversation between the whole family just spiral from there. And it, it, it was actually really a privilege. So you you had an inkling that this could be a special moment. You helped it along a little bit as mm. filmmakers sometimes have to do, but uh, you never knew exactly what you were going to get, but it's incredible what you have, have captured. Thank you. Thank um, you. I mean, so what is, I mean, Holocaust survivor, yet this a most amazing, vi vivacious uh, personality. What is Ella's secret to life? Sure. It's, it's hard to, to put into words really. Um, you know, her secret to life is that she's just able to wake up every day, um, you know, with this, this joie de vivre, this zest for life. And, and she says that she never sleeps with her, with her curtains closed. She always sleeps with her curtains open because, you know, every time the sun rises, she's thankful for another day. And, and, you know, it, it reminds me of another story that she tells, uh, she told me um, during the, the pandemic, during COVID-19, her daughter was standing on the balcony with her and they were both looking out at the beautiful view uh, in Cape Town. And, and her daughter was complaining, saying to her, look at this COVID, look what's happening in the world. And Ella just said to her, look at the beautiful view that's, that's in front of us right now. Like, let, let's just like stop for a minute and appreciate how, you know, be thankful for what, we, for us being able to just experience what we're experiencing right now. And, you know, it's just, it's two people looking at the exact same thing, two people looking at the exact same thing, mm -hmm. but with such a different outlook on life. And it's really hard to put into words what, what that outlook is, but you just have to spend time with Ella to, mm -hmm. to see that she just lights up a room and she, and she has this magnetic personality and this way of looking at the world that I haven't really seen in many people. Hmm. I mean, I, and I guess, um, and I guess then on top of that, the fact that she has survived the Holocaust, I mean, I mean, it's, uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, how much does her faith play into this as well? Because, um, I mean, I think there's even, it's a bit poignant, the title of the film, isn't it? Hmm. So yeah, she she kept her faith through throughout her experiences um, in the Holocaust. Um, you know, and, and I think any of us would have, if, you know, if she had lost her faith or decided to uh, to no longer believe, I think any of us would have understood after all the horrific incidents that she um, had been put through. Um, but she also she just has this unwavering faith and belief in um, in God and that everything happens for a reason. And you know, it, it's just inspiring to. You know, even when she tells her stories, she said that she always knew that she she would survive, so that she could tell the world what these murderers had done to her and her family. So mm. it's just inspiring to hear someone who, you know, who has this faith. Okay, um, I'm gonna we're gonna give our audience a very quick break. Um, so we'll be right back with uh, Jordi Sank, the director and co-producer of I Am Here, theatrical release in the U.S. on March 11th, streaming soon, come May. If you enjoy Factual America, check out the Movie Maker podcast. That's all one word, Movie Maker. Where our friends at MovieMaker.com interview everyone from filmmakers just breaking in to A-listers like David Fincher and Edgar Wright about their movie making secrets and behind the scenes tricks of the trade. They go deep and let the guests speak uninterrupted to get you the most film insight. Now back to Factual America. Welcome back to Factual America. I'm here with award-winning filmmaker Jordi Sank, the director and uh, co-producer of I Am Here, theatrical release on March 11th in the U.S., and will be streaming later this year, I think about May. Um, Jordi, at the beginning of the doc, we were talking about, uh, obviously, Ella Blumenthal and um, what what's her secret to life. Uh, your film starts with a story, it's kind of relayed by a DJ about Ella, now, um, we don't, it kind of stops there, but could you relay that story to us? What is, what was this hook at the beginning, uh, that you, you that gets mentioned about this, something to do with an anti-Semite -Semite or neo-Nazi something that, uh, happened. She wrote this letter. So there was a South African, uh, influencer that posted, you know, had a really, really wide following and, uh, posted the most horrific anti-Semitic 
remarks and Holocaust denial on her uh, social media platforms. And, um, you know, Ella saw this and, and was shown this and was completely shocked and decided to, to write an open letter to this influence. And, and, you know, I don't know if it was from me after experiencing something um, as traumatic as the Holocaust, mm. I would be furious at this influence a bit, but Ella did the most incredible thing. And what she did is she, she wrote this letter and she approached this influencer um, in such a way of, of love. And she offered, she said to this influencer, let's, um, let's sit down, let's meet for a cup of tea and let's, you know, let's exchange our ideas and let's, let's talk about our, our views. And what we'll find in doing so is that th there's far more that unites us uh, than, than what divides us. And it's an, an incredible, um, really, um, you know, there's no other way to exp explain it than, than it's, it's just Ella, you know, it's just this mm. positive way of approaching someone who's full of so much hate. So, uh, you know, it was really just something remarkable that we felt had to be um, put at the beginning of the film just to show how remarkable um, Ella really, really is. Did that cup of tea ever happen? <laughs> Unfortunately, it, it did not. And uh, but Ella, Ella is very hopeful. When uh, whenever I speak to her and I ask her about it, she always says that she's she's still hopeful that hopefully one day that um, that tea will happen. So uh, you know, only time will tell. <laughs> and this is some ninety-something year old who's coming across a uh, social influencer on on social media. I mean, that's that's also I guess you probably tell me Ella to a T uh, as mm. well. Yeah, Ella Ella's very active. She she loves Facebook. She can sit on Facebook for for hours and and you know, she uh, she's great. Um mm. <laughs> she loves to see what's going on mm. even at her age of 100. Yeah. I mean, so we we've, we've discussed it already a little bit, but uh, I mean, how did this project come about? I mean, you you pro you know, knew her uh but I imagine many 90 somethings would have said no, but uh she said yes. Uh, what was she? Uh, how did that work? Or uh, what was she? Uh, was she reluctant? So she she was actually. I think it's because we built such a relationship over the the many years that I've known her. But she was actually very very game, and you know she was she was very excited about the idea. She she'd been speaking to schools and and groups before, and I think she really just understood that that filmmaking and documentaries have such a power to connect with audiences and, and really um, be spread around the world. So she was very excited about that. Um, but the only thing that she was somewhat reluctant um, towards was the, the animation because we really um, wanted to include this 2D animation to depict her memories uh, because we just, we just felt that the stock footage, the way that she told her stories with, mm. with such emotion and it really you just sort of felt like you – you were there the way that she tells her stories and, and the stock footage just really wasn't working with it. So when we started speaking to her about anima 2D animation, she, you know, having her not having really been exposed too much to it, she was very weary um, mm. and cautious about it. But, uh, but when we, we actually animated the, the clip of, um, there's the clip of her in the Warsaw ghetto when, when the right. ghetto set on fire and we showed her that we, we did a sort of a test for her. And when the moment that she saw that, she was absolutely sold on the on the idea of animation because you know she could see that it brought the audience really to to be on this journey with her her as a character and to and to really just sort of relive her experiences with her. So uh, yeah, that that was really the only difficulty that we that we experienced. But she, you know, once we sort of proved it to her, she was completely on board. Yeah, I mean, now that you've raised it, I was gonna I was gonna ask you. I mean. Uh, much has been made of the animation, I think, rightfully so. Um, that's a fine line to getting that right, isn't it? Uh, and mm -hmm. how did that process go? Um, and I guess that was working with, uh, is it Greg Bacher? And was your DP involved with that as well uh, in terms of, uh, because, I, I, you know, that could go in many different ways. You've told it, you've, you've achieved perfect balance, I would argue. But, uh, um, you know, how did that, that process work? Yes, yeah, so so we were very lucky. We did we did a um, quite an extensive search for for local South African animators, um, and we found uh, Greg Backer, who really uh, we just felt that the style in which he's he's done before really uh, it, it sort of spoke to to the project. So um, so you know we got we got him on board at a very early stage, 
and um, and you know our, our DOP was also fantastic. He helped us in terms of um, achieving the color palette that really we felt um, mm. uh, gelled well with the film. Um, you know, so 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 it, it was really just um, you know it was it was a lot of experimentation. The beauty in it is that we had Ella's stories and we had her 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 voiceover. So exactly. the, amazing, the amazing thing was that we, we would listen to her voiceover of, of her telling a particular story over and over and over again. And we would um, all brainstorm together how the best way for us to pick that story. And, you know, we do test storyboards and then uh, we'd um, move to sort of find a line work and do a bit of a, a bit of motion to see how it all feels. And, and, uh, and then you'll, sort of at the end what we would do is show it to Ella and, and Ella would pick up on certain things that we we could uh, um, you know we, we, we would never have been able to pick up on you know sort of finer details um, mm. you know that we felt like we had to correct because then we you know then we sort of staying true to to her memories um, so yeah so, so it, was a, it was quite a long process the animation ended up taking a, a year um, mm. so it was the sort of the longest process within the film but uh but I think it's the most rewarding um, because it really, um, it, you know, it allows the audience to go on this journey with her and to empathize with her on that journey. Uh, I mean, exactly. I mean, it's, uh, these are horrific stories that there's something, it's not that the animation is disarming at all. And that's not the point. It is, it is just kind of, but it's somehow, there's something about it that allows you to sit there and want, listen to her voice and kind of, um, and, and, and and maybe understand in ways we will never be able to truly understand what what yeah. it was like to um to go what she went through and it's um you know it's an it's an incredible incredible story um and then now here we are in 2022 and another european war wages i mean was if you had any interaction, interactions with ella about that i mean she must be i mean i think it's even in your film uh, she even says towards the end this could you know stuff like this could happen very well happen again doesn't she say that yeah. You're correct. She says exactly that. And, I, and, and she's, when I've heard her speak about it, she, she's just shocked. You know, she, she can't believe that in the times that we're living today, people haven't learned from, from history's lessons and haven't learned from the, what, you know, what the Holocaust and what happens when hate is taken mm -hmm. to the extreme. And, and, um, you know, one thing that, that, um, that I, I've heard her say is also just, you know, in these day and ages, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's so much easier for people to throw bombs at one another and to shoot rather than actually just wanting to sit at a table and to, and to talk and to, um, you know, and to, to find ways to, to solve issues. So, so I, I know from her, it's, it's almost like she's seen uh, World War II playing in front of her eyes in color. Um, so, so it's really just, uh, you know, she's very shaken by, uh, by what's happening. And, and is this one reason you've made the film, lest future generations forget? Um, I mean, she is practically the, one of the last people on earth who could tell this story, f horrible tale firsthand, isn't she? Mm. Yes, no, no, definitely. The um, us wanting to to get her story out there, that you know, there's there's many reasons, but I, I think one of the the most important for us is. Um, you know, we want people to be able to connect with a Holocaust survivor's story so that people can learn from, from, uh, from the Holocaust so that, it, so that it can never happen again and people can learn, um, you know, the, and so this is almost an, an, a cautionary tale of what can happen when, when people hate one another. Um, you know, no matter our beliefs, our, our religions, um, our skin color, you know, um, it's yeah it's it's this this film um it really really is um a uh, i think it's more relevant now than mm. than ever you know than when we actually completed the film now 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 seeing what's going on in the world it's 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 even more relevant because people need to learn from from history so that we can have a um a future that's that's worth living in a peaceful future I mean, indeed, you must have had no idea that <laughs> none of us did that uh, yeah. something like this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, thank you again because it's a great. I mean, it, it's I've I've got a new hero in life uh, in Ella, and I, I was thinking 
I couldn't get the printer to work on my way over here, and I was like about to I was about to hit the printer, and I was like, wait a minute, this is there's there's much worse thing. <laughs> this is nothing. Um, not to make it so glib, but um, but Jordy, what's next for you? Uh, you've this was your director this feature debut, wasn't it uh, for you? What do you, what do you got planned? I think you got a you must have a you have a promising career ahead of you. Ah, thank you, thank you so much, Matthew. Um, so uh, it's funny the the next project that I that we actually have completed is is premiering in, in South Africa at the end of this month, and it's it's a completely different um, project altogether. But it's a a narrative short um, in one of, in one of the eleven official languages of South Africa, which is uh, the, the language is Afrikaans, and um, and it's a story somewhat inspired by by Ella. Um, but it's about a woman um, in her later years in life dealing with the tragic loss of her um, of her husband, and you know it's you know uh, and I think also with um, you know these times of COVID that we've that we've all uh, and the pandemic that we've all experienced, we've all lost loved ones and we've all mm. lost people dear to us, and um, you know it's it sort of answers the question to how do we um, how do we sort of pick up our lives when we do lose someone we love. Um, so that's the next project that's uh, premiering in uh, in South Africa at the end of the month. Mm. Um, mm. I mean, I guess, indeed, I guess South, South Africa is one of the places that's been on the front lines when it's come to COVID, uh, mm. unfortunately. Uh, but I, I imagine South Africa must be a, a, a treasure trove of subjects for a documentary mm. filmmaker. Is that, uh, is that that's De- your hope, I guess? No, de- definitely. There's so many different... Um, cultures and and unique people in South Africa really um, it, it, it really is a gold mine of of uh, of subjects and stories that need to that need to and deserve to be told so uh, so uh, yeah so uh, looking forward to many many more projects uh, um, in South Africa okay well um, we'd be we, we may be called factual America but we'd happy to have you on again Um uh, I just want to thank uh, Jordi Sank, again, the director and co-producer of I Am Here, theatrically released on March 11th and will be streaming later. Um, just Google it. I'm sure you'll find out where that is uh, shortly. So, Jordi, thank you so much again. We've It's been a pleasure having you on, and if we haven't scared you off, we'd love to have you on again. Thank you, Matthew. We'd love that. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out to Sam and Joe Graves at Intersound Audio in Eskrik, England in deepest, darkest Yorkshire. A big thanks to Nevin Apanovich, podcast manager at Alamo Pictures, who ensures we continue getting great guests onto the show. And finally, a big thanks to our listeners. As always, we love to hear from you, so please keep sending us feedback and episode ideas. You can reach out to us on YouTube, social media, or directly by going to our website, www.factualamerica.com and clicking on the Get In Touch link. And as always, please remember to like us and share us with your friends and family wherever you happen to listen or watch podcasts. This is Factual America, signing off. You've been listening to Factual America. This podcast is produced by Almo Pictures, specializing in documentaries, television, and shorts about the USA for international audiences. Head on down to the show notes for more information about today's episode, our guests, and the team behind the podcast. Subscribe to our mailing list or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Alamo Pictures. Be the first to hear about new productions, festivals showing our films, and to connect with our team. Our homepage is alamopictures.co.uk.